Hello, I'd like to welcome everybody to Tech Tuesday. I'm Jim Bush, one of the support managers at DataLink and customer support. This is our fourth installment of Tech Tuesday for 2014, and we're glad you're able to take time out of your schedules to join us. Today's session is going to cover the best practices for Cisco Nexus management. Um, I've got a little bit of housekeeping to cover before we get started. Today, during the session, we're going to have Christopher McKinnon and Wayne Roan, both support engineers, responding to any of your questions via the Q&A tool. The Q&A transcript is going to be emailed to all the attendees within a few days after the presentation, probably around three days. Uh, the recorded version of this event is also going to be available online. It will probably be about the same amount of time to get the questions and the recorded version, so two or three days. If you have any questions after the event's concluded or suggestions on future Tech Tuesdays, just send those to techtuesday at datalink.com and we'll uh, take your suggestions and respond to your questions accordingly. Today's speaker is Tim Borgert, a senior network engineer with Datalink. Tim's going to be taking you into the depths of DCNM today and be sure to fasten your seat belts. Take it away, Tim. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Tim Borgert with Datalink, obviously. Um, what we're going to go over, and, and just just to clarify, the, the slide deck, I'm not a, really a slide person, but I do have a slide deck here. Some of it might look a little bit salesy, salesy but I'm going to try to keep that as minimal as possible. Um, most of it's for information for you guys. Obviously, it might elicit some questions that you have, so hopefully uh, Wayne and Christopher will be able to answer those questions as best as possible, and if they can't, you know, obviously they'll forward it on and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. So DCNM from a from, uh, standpoint from Cisco is a product that was a replacement of Cisco, um, now I'm even blanking on it, sorry about that, their old management tool that they had, Cisco Works, sorry, took me a second. Uh, they've greatly enhanced the features of this portfolio to include both SAN and LAN, which you can license separately. Uh, and as far as the agenda goes, and Jim already covered it, you know, what our what our goals are, management interface types. Um, you have some dashboards. What kind of client interface you have, and so I will switch to the next slide. Sorry about that. So with DCNM, the four key areas that Cisco is trying to cover is obviously management of the unified fabric, which would be from a LAN SAN, and a lot of our customers, a lot of you probably are really looking at unifying your fabric, your network, putting LAN and SAN together so you can obviously save some money. Virtualization of your data center. Um, configuration being able to use DCNM to set out consistent configurations out to your hardware so that you don't actually have to go in and manually configure hardware repeatedly. You can actually deploy it via DCNM. And then support of the Nexus portfolio as far as being able to monitor, uh, look at trending, also be able to um, see hotspots and be able to really dial, dial in close to those particular areas and troubleshoot a lot more effectively. As far as the, the uh, DCNM management interface types, they have the um, Java client for LAN and SAN, and you can see that there's a unified web client. The unified web client is basically what you would log into when you first log in to DCNM Prime. And then the LAN and the SAN clients are pieces that you, you actually can dial into more specifically for the area. You actually access that via the unified web client. Um, <clears throat> you can, the nice thing with the ECNM is that you can actually use uh, role-based access. So if you have LAN managers uh, or SAN managers, and you just want them to be able to access the SAN from the unified client, that's all they'd have access to. Conversely, with the LAN people, that's what they'd have access to. Or you can have people that have access to everything. Uh, it just gives you that ability to focus in that area. As 
sorry, there's a little bit of a pause between the slides, so it takes me a little bit of time to wait for it to come up. Uh, so the dashboards that you see in DCM, this is what the unified client would look like. When you log in, you'll actually see what were the events that occurred the last 24 hours. You can see if there's any trouble areas. You can drill into those trouble areas if you see critical errors on the network or in the SAN. You can actually, there's hot links on there that you can actually click on. They'll actually take you to the specific incidences as well as the hardware where it's occurring. So you can actually drill down into the hardware itself um, right from that interface. And this does actually tell you that right there, sorry. <laughs> um, from the Converge network standpoint, it will actually give you a nice uh, topograph topographical map of what you are monitoring so that you can actually see all the hardware that you're monitoring out there. You can see where hotspots are. You can actually click on items in that topographical map to be able to go manage them or see, um, even do reporting on them to see what has occurred within you know, the day, the week, the month. It will actually keep that historical information for you. So if you are graphing anything or tra tracking any type of um, bandwidth behaviors or uh, you know, incidences of, let's say, ports are having issues and you are worried about you know, drop packets, that type of thing, you can actually kind of see what's, what the trending is that's going on. Obviously, these slides are going to be available afterwards. Um, you can, and you, you can see that there was a link in there a little earlier where you can actually get a, additional information on DCNM as far as there's videos out there from Cisco that show you the different aspects and how-tos they actually have some how-to videos out there on their website that will show you how to do specific tasks within DCNM. Um, I added this slide in here just because DCNM does more than just SAN and LAN. You actually have visibility into your virtualized networking now as far as VMware, your, your servers and all that stuff. You can actually monitor what's going on in your VMware environment from that um, unified pane of glass. So you know, you know it has hooks into vCenter so that it will actually get the information up from vCenter so you don't have to in, you know you don't have to log in separately to vCenter to get that information. You can actually see it within DCNM if you so choose to do that. Uh, it will actually show you performance, um, you know, your usage, your latency. Uh, the nice thing that I'm seeing some of my customers do is they're using it to see what type of um, saturation do I have on links even, what's going on in my environment from my VMware hosts out to the network, and so I can track and, and see where there's hot spots and where I need to make any type of adjustments in my network or in my SAN to uh, alleviate or not have to worry about those issues later. Again, the DCNM, SAN and LAN, Java clients, the look and feel is the same. That's the nice thing about it. Uh, you know, if you go into SAN, you go into LAN, they're very, very similar interfaces. They try to go for uniformity. Uh, what the nice things that are occurring, they had this on the SAN side where you could actually do uh, – you could create your vSAN trunks. You can cr you could create your vSANs. You can do all those um, things on the SAN side. Now they're you're starting to see this on the LAN side, where I can actually do provisioning for VPCs, virtual port channels. I can start doing fabric path provisioning via templates. There's already there's some pre pre canned templates that are created now, but they give you the ability to actually create your own templates if you want and use that to deploy via DCNM. So if you so choose, there might be a specific type of um, uniformity that you want in your configurations. You can actually create a template, use that within DCNM, and do that for your deployment so that you're always in a cons consistent state. And you can see here, um, 
you know, you have the ability to do real-time monitoring. You can do OS management, which basically means you can push out OSs to your various boxes to try to keep on a consistent level. That also lets you know what level of OS that each individual box is at. Um, this is also uh, PCI compliant. That's the big thing that uh, Cisco really pushed to make sure that they are PCI compliant so that you can use DCNM in those environments and not have to worry about compliance issues. And again, here's a view of the unified web client. Uh, this just gives you an idea of what you, you can see from a glance. You can actually customize what you see when you log into the unified web client so that um, you know, if, you, if you're worried about top talkers or if you're worried about what occurred overnight in my data center as far as any issues that I need to be aware of, um, uh, visibility into my uh, VMware, environment to make sure that none of my servers had an issue overnight, that type of thing. You can do that customization to your screen so that those things pop up that are important to you. Uh, you can, you can uh, group devices in certain areas. So if you have like a DMZ type servers, you can actually put those in the group if you wanted to or you know different specific business units, you can group those separately on the screens or separate screens so that whatever works for you from a view standpoint makes life easier. Uh, the nice thing that you can do with DCNM as well is that from a configuration standpoint, I can make backups of my configurations. I, can have an ar I have an archive of that, so if I need to restore a configuration from a box that went down, I can actually push that out right away and I have a working valid configuration that I had prior and just replace it onto the server or the switch and bring it up uh, that much faster. Okay, sorry about that. Here, here are some of the uh, wizards that are available. There are actually more wizards than what is shown here. Um, I do not have the complete list, but it is out on the Cisco website, so if you ever wanted to find out, you could go to the DCNM website uh, on Cisco. So you can see that uh, from a wizard standpoint, these are pre-canned ones that are already created. There's Fabric Path, so you, if, you were, if you are deploying Fabric Path or looking at deploying Fabric Path, this gives you the ability to actually use the wizard to create your Fabric Path links. It'll actually bring up a map and show you what the links will look like before you actually deploy, and then you can deploy it. Same with like VPC. You can use the wizard to create a VPC um, connection. FCOE is supported in there. Uh, VDC, that has VDC in here. I have not seen the VDC wizard, but it does give you the ability to monitor the VDCs, which is unique that the fact is, and there's a slide later that will show this, that when you have VDCs, virtual device contacts, which are in the 7Ks, it will actually show the individual VDCs, and you can monitor individual VDCs, not the, just the individuals, not just the 7,000, but you'll actually be able to monitor the VDCs within that next of 7,000. As well, same with OTV. Uh, I have not seen OTV and DCNM. I'm not sure what the wizard would do for you there. Um, there you know, OTV configuration is not that difficult, but they've probably automated it to some point. And then, again, there's zone um, and ACL deployments that you can do with the wizards as well as switch and port profiles so you can have that consistency that you want. Uh, you also have this on the SAN side from you know, creating your zone sets and your vSANs, that type of thing. This is more specifically towards the LAN side. That's why I pulled out the SAN tabs. So this actually gives you a, a better view of if you're using the Fabric Path uh, wizard what your view would look like. You can see that it's, it's showing your leaves and spines that are coming out and then the, the uh, hosts below that. 
uh, virtual port channel, same idea. It will give you that, that view so you can see where are my virtual port channels or where is my fabric path networks. Um, you can see the differentiation in color, so that gives you an idea of whose fabric path, whose who's, uh, virtual port channel. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can use a template to provision and, and deploy. I don't think I didn't see it on this slide where they have the uh, VDC in here, but it, but what you can see is there's a performance trending on the right side. It'll actually show you uh, what the performance is occurring from a let's say VPC standpoint, being able to see what's going on over the VPC, what is my bandwidth look like? Am I getting oversaturated on my VPCs or am I having any issues with the VPC at all? Same with like Fabric Path or FCOE. And this, this is a nice view of what the Java client looks like. I know some of this is repetitive links. Um, I've, I've got quite a few LAN topology views that I can use that I can uh, put up on the screen when I, when I customize it so that I can, you know, if I wanted to see what uh, a particular VLAN is looking like and where it's going out to, I can actually do that. Or if I want to look at my overall data center or my overall network picture in a certain area, I can do that. Um, also, you can do uh, some security. I haven't seen how deep it goes in the security, but I think it's very, very peripheral as far as VACLs and ACLs. That's that's what it gives you as far as the ability to you know deploy or, or uh, use the wizard for. Uh, configuration, again, we touched on that earlier with the archive and image management. So from a software standpoint, I can have versions of software that, I, that we've been using, and if I need to roll back or roll forward, I have that readily available and I can push out to, this, out to the switches. Uh, same with the configurations. Um, the on-demand performance monitoring, that's where you can actually go into an individual uh, device if you wanted to and set up some thresholds and have those charts right up live on the on the screen for you. You can see that it supports pretty much all the Nexus uh, technologies such as FEX, VDC, VPC, um, port channeling, fabric path, OTV. So you actually can see all those different things that the Nexus product line provides from a technology standpoint and be able to monitor them and see what what and if anything is going on or drill down deeper into it. Again, you can get uh, you know an inventory management type of uh, scenario there too if you want to see what what you do have being used, your port usage, um, you know if you have a Nexus 7000, Nexus 5000, whatever Nexus product that you have and how many ports are in use, how many are open so you can get an idea if you need to start looking at adding more ports or not. From the DCN, DCNM licensing standpoint, whenever you buy a Nexus um, switch, it comes with DCNM essentials for free. This gives you this will show you what features are available with DCNM Essentials. There's quite a bit of features that are already included in that. And then the advanced features are a separate, that's a purchased per device, or per switch, I should say, license. If you, if you see to the far left, you see the converged software package. That, that is actually part of the whole Essentials package. So it is licensed. It's stored on the server where you're running DCNM, but it's licensed per switch. And so if you needed advanced um, features available, you know, you don't have to have it on everything. You could have it on particular switches where you have the advanced features. You can do that. Um, and then I think it's the next slide that will show actually some of the features that you'll see in the essentials and then, and then the additional features that you can see in the advanced edition. It does the same from the SAN standpoint as well, so you can see different 
licensing. I don't have the drill down for the SAN, but that's available on the Cisco site. So from DCNM LAN Essentials, this shows you all the available features that are in DCNM LAN Essentials for the various hardware. Now where it says N7K slash 2K, that's just what the from the FEC standpoint. The 7K is what you see there is what you get for the 7K, vice versa with the 5K and so on. So you can see, you know, you, you've, you get quite a bit of view, uh, visibility. You'll have the the port channel, you do not have virtual port channel, that, that's available in the advanced edition. Uh, port pinning, LACP, um, you know, dot 1Q, spanning tree, you can, you can see the various options that you have here and that will be available in the slide deck. Uh, it does include fabric path, which is nice from the essential standpoint, um, if you're so inclined to use fabric path. And then the DCNM LAN Advanced. What you get from the LAN Advanced is the VDC context, so you'll see that visibility in the individual VDCs. Um, virtual port channel, so you can use that wizard. You can start deploying virtual port channels and see the visibility of, of the virtual port channels themselves as far as statuses and being able to drill down. Uh, .1x security, object tracking, uh, HSRP, which is kind of nice because you can see what's going on in your redundancy protocols going on uh, going on in your network, so you can see if, if there are any issues that, that you need to address. Um, the integrated security features, uh, that one I'm not sure what all is included other than what's showing here with the snooping, the ARP, ARP, ARP inspection, and the uh, source guard. Tunnel interface, that's probably that's more dealing towards not GRE tunnels, but probably I would assume the OTV tunnels. So that you can see that visibility into what's going on in the OTV connection between data centers. And then config change control, um, which is a big thing and obviously that's probably why Cisco did it that way, so they can make some more additional money. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry if any Cisco people are on here. And then OS management, so that we can actually be able to deploy um, operating systems out to the switches or rollback if we need to. Come on. So just kind of rehash on DCNA Manager. What are the things that we can do? You know, topology view, configuration, provisioning, um, fault management. Host and summary dashboards, that's where you get that, that uh, drill down all the way down to the hosts, which is nice to have. Uh, device discovery, which a lot of tools do out there, obviously, that, that are management tools. It's going to use SNMP. Um, config backup, some do, some don't from a, from a standpoint of um, management tools. I do like having config backup, so it makes it easier to recover. And then monitoring. Um, I think the bigger differentiator that DCM brings is the fact that we can drill down into VMware and be able to manage those hosts, especially if, let's say, you have a UCS deployment. <clears throat> we can actually go into your VMware, you know, all the way down to the VMware host. We can see what's going on from the hosts all the way up through the network as far as, you know, any type of network issues or bandwidth issues that we're looking at, uh, you know, from a SAN standpoint and a LAN standpoint, which can be very, very critical when you're trying to deploy um, servers and, and hosts. And I already just talked about the key differentiators. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sometimes I jump the gun a little bit. Uh, Again, this is the nice thing is, is it's you know using open APIs, so it's very very um, I don't know if you want to call it customizable, but it it works with a lot of different systems. They do right now they are VMware compatible. Um, I know on the roadmap they are looking at uh, Microsoft's uh, virtualization as well, so that we can you know and the other tools that are out there, so that you can do more than just VMware. 
visibility across the network, compute and storage. If this is too salesy, let me know, guys. Sorry. Um, again, here's the resource. The, this is the web page that you'd want to go to. If you, They have the videos there. They have the data sheets. So um, I've been out there a bit so that you can see individual how-tos. They do have some how-tos and you know, how, to, how to monitor bandwidth you know your bandwidth connection how you know how am I drilling down into uh, uh, VMware host that type of thing they do have these videos out there they're very very helpful um, they've done a lot better job with bringing out more information and being relevant information they do have a um, trial license that you can do this just shows you the link where you can go to get that it's a 60 day eval um, it's the full working DCNM. So, you know, like I said, you have DCNM already for the essentials. If you have any Nexus products, you already have DCNM essentials. You can install the server at any time and be able to monitor, use those DCNM essentials. What this is for is more for the, um, you know, the, the advanced version of DCNM, both on the LAN and the SAN side. This slide, this was a Cisco slide, slide sorry about that. <laughs> I didn't realize it was still in there. And this just shows the difference between essential and advanced. We already kind of went over this, but this is just a summary page of it. So you can always take a look at it and see, um, you know, if you want a quick view of what's the difference between essentials and advanced. This is just a quick view of it. Supported platforms. Any MDS from even the 9700 series, even though it doesn't show it in here, it, it does support the 9700 series MDS platform and any of the Nexus product lines, including the, the 1000V, as you can see there. From the Catalyst 6500, it allows you to manage and monitor, but you, it does not have the ability to, um, to do the uh, wizards as far as you know, deployment wizards onto it. The same with the Fabric Interconnects from UCS. The 6100 and the 6200 series are covered. It's management and monitoring, but you cannot do configuration on it. So the two that can't be configured are, is the CAT 6500 series as well as the Fabric Interconnects. Everything else above there can be managed, managed monitored, and configured via, via the wizards. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, key takeaways. This is just a quick slide. Again, some of it's salesy. Sorry about that. I try not to do too much sales. I don't do slides a lot, so as you can tell, when I do do them, they uh, sometimes they're interesting. So here's a here's a nice view of Fabric Path and managing your DCNM or managing your data center LAN. It gives you a nice view of what's going on, you know, how your network is actually con configured, right? What links does it see? What type of links does it see? Are they VPC? Are there peer links? Are they the keep alive link, you know, from a VPC standpoint? From the Fabric Path. You know who's my leaf? Who's my spine? What you know? How many connections? How many physical links do I actually have going down there? Uh, again, it's VDC aware, so that I will actually see the individual VDCs and the connections from those VDCs, be it VPC or uh, Fabric Path or just a, you know traditional LACP, whatever type of links that are coming out of it, I will actually be able to see that. And it'll be identified as that for that particular VDC. And you can schedule, uh, you can actually do scheduling of roll rollouts of configurations or rollbacks to configurations. So if you if you have a maintenance period that that you have set, you can actually set up DCNM to deploy your configuration 
out at that particular time. And if there's an issue, you can either schedule it or immediately have it roll back. This just goes into a little bit more what you can do within the VDC standpoint from DCNM. So like I said, it does it handles it transparently, but you actually see the individual VDCs separate. So that that's the nice thing. It doesn't look like one big mess. It actually looks like, you know, here it's showing VDC one, two, three, four, you usually name it. Right? You'd have like core, DMZ, whatever you call it. And you'll actually see it on your screen. Here's the VDC core. Here's VDC DMZ and the individual links that are coming out of it. Um, Wizard-based configuration, again, like I said, I have not seen the wizard for VDC. Here it just basically goes out and says, you know, you can do your resource limit enforcement um, with the templates. You can actually customize the templates if you want. You can take the template that's there. You can go in there and make adjustments to those templates and then deploy them as your own templates. Um, Role-based access control is also involved there so that if you wanted to have a new VDC deployed, the person that's trying to deploy it obviously has to have that access. If they don't, they're not going to be allowed to create that VDC. And you can see here it says topology representation, VDC per chassis, and VDC, VDC to VDC connectivity, which is key. You'd like to be able to see what that looks like, how my connections, <laughs> am I missing a connection between VDCs or not, that type of thing. So. And this just goes into what the view looks like. You can see the individual VDCs here. Um, you know, switch one, switch two, you know, left and right, and then it shows the VDCs, how they're coming out. And then you can see from the uh, aggregate VDC going down to the access layer. If the core VDC had a connection to the access layer too, you'd, actually, you'd see another link coming out of there. And then you can see um, that it says on the left-hand side N7K1, and then on the right, N7K2, so it identifies which switch is switch. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can drill down from here. You can actually go into the individual VDCs themselves and, uh, you know, for a configuration standpoint and troubleshooting. This just, uh, you know, this is a, a gratuitous slide that Cisco would <laughs> likes to have seen that, they have uh, various customers that are using DCNM in their data centers to manage their networks, both from a LAN and a SAN standpoint. And why is this not switching? And thank you. I know it was kind of short and sweet. Hopefully it was sweeter than short, but... <laughs> Jim, go ahead and finish up with your uh, cleanup. All right. Thanks oh, I have one Jim. more slide I, I here. Sorry. That. Oh, go ahead. It's just the resources. Here's. Yeah, here's I'm not going to jump over top of you. <laughs> this is your slide anyway, so go ahead. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. We do appreciate your time today, Tim. Uh, thanks for uh, taking the time and uh, putting this together for us. Um, I, I was uh, told that the audio at the beginning might not have come through, so I just wanted to let everybody know again. Uh, the Q&A transcript will be emailed to everybody who attended within a few days after the presentation. The recorded version of this is going to be online probably within the same amount of time, a couple of days. Um, if you have any questions at all, feel free to uh, reach out to techtuesday at datalink.com via email, and we'll be happy to uh, answer those for you. Um, the uh, tentative schedule for upcoming events. Uh, May 20th at 2 o'clock Eastern Time, we're going to be presenting Net Backup Ops Center. So if you know uh, anyone or if you yourself are interested in Net Backup Ops Center, please uh, plan to join us. Again, thanks everybody for attending, and uh, you all have a great day. Thanks.